Well, good evening, brothers. Um, again, uh, welcome um, to the second series of our three part series of uh, career preparedness. Um, this evening, we're going to be talking about uh, pivoting. Um, and, and really, you know, uh, Brother Bates is going to really go into detail, but when we talk about pivoting, we start talking about those careers that we've been in for years, and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, uh, we decide we want to transition to other careers, and, and he'll talk to us about how do you use the experience that you've gained and you've had to be able to um, move over to a different type of a career. Um, this, this evening, I do want to remind you, brothers, um, that are on the call, uh, let me encourage you all to go to Sigma Link. Uh, Sigma Link is off of the fraternity's website. Um, this, this is something that frater the fraternity has invested in, um, gives you all an opportunity to upload your resumes, if you're in education, your VITAs, um, it's giving you, it's an opportunity for you, uh, for comp companies or school districts or college and universities to be able to go on there and be able to look at brothers and then reach out to you. So it's something that you don't have to do. You just basically upload your information um, and then you will get information from those particular companies or corporations. So we're encouraging the brothers to definitely take the opportunity for Sigma Link. Uh, we are waiting, also we're waiting to hear um, the dates for our virtual career fair. Uh, last year, we kicked off um, the inaugural virtual career fair um, and it was a huge success. Um, we invited our, the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority and they participated also. So we're looking forward to that. And that is not only just for the collegians, um, we wanna make that very well known. It's for all brothers uh, to be involved. Uh, we have a number of corporations that will be participating in this. Um, and again, we had brothers that were, had an opportunity to actually have conversations uh, with em employers who were hiring. So it is a great opportunity for that. But this evening, again, as we have this three-part series, um, we're on our second part last night. We, we talked about... Um, with our collegiate brothers and getting them prepared tonight. We're pivoting. And then next Tuesday, um, same time, we're gonna be talking about knowing your worth, um, the act of negotiating a better salary. So we know that we've got brothers who might even be in jobs now. Um, Tierney will be talking about how do you make yourself more marketable in your current job? How do you make yourself more marketable and jobs that might, might you might see and knowing how to price yourself and understanding exactly what you work. So that's on next Tuesday and that will conclude our three part series. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce this brother though. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Brother Tierney Bates um, has been a member of fraternity for a very long time. He is currently the assistant vice chancellor at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Um, um, Tierney has been involved from in higher ed for 20 plus years now. Um, he is also, he's on our education team. He's our special assistant for our higher education and career initiatives. And so he brings a lot of wealth, a lot of experience. Um, and he is at a really a premier institution and he's leading those students in careers. And so we want to take this opportunity to introduce to you all, um, Brother Dr. Tierney Bates. You're on, Tierney. Sure. Thank you, Brother Cheney. And good evening, brothers. It's an honor and a pleasure to be around with my brothers at any point in time to help share some great knowledge and opportunity when we talk about specifically career development for our, our alumni brothers and our collegiate brothers as a whole, and specifically what we've seen over the last couple of years, or actually the last decade, uh, in some regard as well. So tonight, what I want to do is kind of paint a picture to you of thinking how to network differently uh, when it comes to your job search and pivoting. I want you to think about your skills and matching skills 
to an ever evolving and changing labor market. And then I'm gonna give you some ideas to think about to retool and retrain yourself uh, to be able to prepare no matter where you're at in your career to process what are those next steps, what are the things you need to do, whether you're still you know, within 10 years, 20 years, or even 30 years uh, into your career uh, overall, as far as I'm concerned. So brothers, bear with me. Uh, I don't have any slides because uh, this is just knowledge that I wanna be able to share with you guys. I'll leave time for us to be able to have a conversation, answer any questions you may have, uh, and anything moving forward all right. But again, I wanna talk about networking differently, matching skills, ever evolving, changing market, and also retooling and reskilling those as a whole. So let's start there first and foremost. Uh, if you've paid attention, we've been in this thing called a COVID pandemic. In the last two years, the market has been shaking up around talent in organizations. Right now, there literally are close to 10 million jobs across the USA that are just empty. In majority of certain fields, there is truly a struggle to find talent. I know that because I was on a call today, I pay attention to our labor statistics in the state of North Carolina, but also as well. The economy has shifted as well. Technology is more of a focus than ever before. We've moved, if you pay attention to history from a uh, you know industrial economy to a manufacturing economy. Now what I call is we're in an intellectual property slash technology economy. And the jobs, as some of you brothers have came out of college and noticed that existed, well, in the next 20 years, 60% of all jobs that we know of today will be completely different. So if you have sons, daughters, or those who are growing up right now, like me, I have a first grader, the jobs by the time she high school and goes to college will be completely different than what we face today. So it's important to understand how do we teach, engage our own brothers in this adaptability with the ever evolving market and change. And so, as I told the collegiates last night, career can't be linear nowadays. It can no longer be stay with the organization 20 years, get your gold watch and get that uh, great retirement. Even if you work for an organization, like I do in the state, even from a state investment in your retirement and different things like that, we've seen the ebb and flow of the economy that will impact you around retirement as well. So it's important to understand that we are now in a new normal. And what does that mean? That means more than ever, for brothers that are seasoned, they need to think about not only retirement, but they also need to think about how they're still valuable to the workforce, specifically as we see more and more people left. Over 2 million women left the workforce. You also had almost 3 million people retire in the last year. So that's why you see this huge gap of so many organizations needing talent, because if I have any brothers on the call today that are baby boomers or Gen Xers, uh, as far as that's concerned, you're going to see a lot of those people step out and completely change. And you're also seeing more and more brothers and sisters go the entrepreneurial route because they have so much information, data, and years of experience. They can go out and make a buck on the side faster than they can doing their paycheck and punching it in somebody else's clock. So that's why it's important for us to have this discussion even overall. If you look at it as well, COVID-19 shook up so much where people were like, hmm, I've been working with this organization and I want a better quality of life. So for many brothers, if you don't know this, one out of every six jobs that are coming on board or being advertised nowadays is remote. Prior to the pandemic, that was one out of 67 jobs. Not only that, if we think about more jobs being remote, there's more what I call flexibility in benefits, packaging, and what they're offering. Every job nowadays is doing more sign-on bonuses. Uh, and that sign-on bonus can range anywhere from $3,000 up to $20,000. <laughs> there's definitely a shift in workforce and how crazy it is. So it's good for those who are trying to pivot, as you brothers are here tonight, but it's also good for the younger brothers who are getting to graduate as far as walking into an economy that is not suffering. If you really think about it, it might be suffering from a lens of the haves and haves not, but the economy during the pandemic, it only took a quick dip when the pandemic first hit and astronomical highs for certain organizations and certain industries where they have not took a hit financially and actually are doing better based upon what happened during the economy and during the pandemic as well. <clears throat> Another shift is there is a more push for organizations to hire people of color. So equity is at the top of mind of organizations after the George Floyd incident and after organizations made these huge, what I would call performative acts to say, we're going to support X, Z, we're going to do X, overall. 
And it's important for us to understand that with that, brothers, there's ample opportunity for you. It's just a matter of thinking through what does that opportunity look like? So let's jump into it. Most brothers, they're what's called 10, 15 to 30 years in their field. You're the expert in that field. What most brothers don't realize is that once you become an expert, you have the ability to sell your intellectual property. So when I talk about entrepreneurship, if I'll give you an example, if you've worked in construction, if you've worked in uh, business development, things like that, you have a skill set and years of experience that others are willing to pay you either to train new folks, adapt organizational shifts, or alternatives of what that organization needs overall based upon your skills. There's also the uniqueness that most brothers don't understand is that if we look at our careers, we stay somewhere sometimes too long. And I know that's a hard one for some people to peel to swallow because you can reach what I call the glass ceiling. And when you reach the glass ceiling, meaning you've reaching your peak around what income you can make, you're reaching your peak around what you can do in the job in some regard. And for some, that's fine. You get, we become creature of habits as we get older. And so you wanna kind of go in, do your thing, come home and do your thing. But for some, they're thinking, what is next, right? And fraternity is that thing around the, the great 12 inch rules, the worth of example, you know, the pleasure in work, all that other great stuff that we think about. And so when you're talking about pivoting, when you're talking about having an opportunity to look at other things that you can be doing, there's this thing I call, and I'll drop it in the chat when we uh, answer questions, called a book called Design Your Life. No matter where you are in your career, whether it's 10 years or 30 years, most people want to have what we call an encore life. There's something you always want to do. You want to retire and maybe go play golf. You don't realize, hey, I play golf all the time. I could be teaching people how to play golf and get paid to do that. There is something on the table for you to be able to still create opportunity for you. And that book talks about life design and talks about how you pivot in supporting the endeavors and the different things you want to do in regard to your career development term or even short term when you're close to retirement as a whole. So look, when we talk about networking, you've probably heard the saying before, your network is your net worth. So for a lot of us in this space right now, we have to realize how important our social capital really is when you're trying to pivot career wise. Because a lot of people will go into a job and usually you know your coworkers very well. And of course, you're gonna know your supervisor and people within the organization. But how well do you know people outside your organization that are doing the same thing? How are you engaging in your field, whether it's through a professional association or through even a local association in some regards, for people to know who you are? So to know if Lenny is someone who has a skill set, but only his organization knows that skill set, we're already missing the boat. People need to know who you are. So for the brothers that are looking at pivoting, one of the things I tell you about is LinkedIn. And I know that's hard for some brothers like, ah, you know, I really don't go on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn tripled the number of people who opened a profile up during the pandemic. And it's still the number one place for headhunters to go and look for the talent. I can't tell you that every day, somebody at least once or twice a week is in my inbox on LinkedIn, asking or talking about an opportunity, wanting to have a conversation with me. If your skills are correct, and if you advertise those and you set your LinkedIn correctly, and I can send this to Jeremy to send out the brothers of how to set up your LinkedIn, you literally can put on open to work based upon location, based upon job interests, based upon your experience and your education, and it will attract to your space. It will attract them to your site as a whole. And nine times out of 10, a headhunter will contact you based upon it. I know that because even with my wife being in healthcare, she gets hit up every week as well because right now certain industries are hot. Healthcare, so supply chain and logistics, uh, anything dealing with um, uh, not only supply, but organizations like Amazon's that have also off branch businesses and opportunities to work through that. So again, you have to understand the market and the labor demands. Tech is huge right now. Anybody that's in IT, cybersecurity, if you can get a certification in those different things, those will help you as well. But if you don't have a LinkedIn account, or if you have not what I would like to say, updated your LinkedIn account, that was where I would start first and foremost around networking, because it's important to understand that LinkedIn is something that's very important. Um, I know this because LinkedIn has asked me to be a LinkedIn influencer. And the more and more people who follow you on LinkedIn, they share not only your site, but they also share your content. 
And what a lot of brothers don't realize is LinkedIn is now helping you kind of like a Facebook to help share content. Example, I just posted maybe a couple hours ago about what we're doing here at UNC. And I've got already within three hours, uh, uh, so many likes. I think it was like 700, 800 likes. So many people following it and reposting it as far as that's concerned. That is one reason why it draws a lot of talent acquisition people in because they're following what I'm talking about and what I'm doing specifically around talent acquisition, career development and different things. And they know that, hey, you might know someone, i.e. through your fraternity or through the work you do to be able to help us find the talent that we want to have or work. Not only is it important on LinkedIn, you can tell people not only what you're looking for job wise, but what you're the expert in. And the more friends you make on LinkedIn, the more your information is shared. This is what we call data analytics. I can go in the back of my house of LinkedIn and see who's seeing me, who's watching me, um, who from a data analytics importance is on point. I know the best days for me to post are Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, because that's when most people after are looking for candidates and jobs based upon watching the data come through. So it's important for you to understand that and think through that, this how is your LinkedIn looking overall? Also, there are more and more than ever, and we'll see it right uh, as Brother Cheney already mentioned, where we'll have our own recruitment and job fair, and it's gonna be virtual. So the virtual career fair space has really taken over since the pandemic has began. And it's important for us to understand how do we show up in there? And so you have organizations like Career Echo, Raisin, Career Plus, and multiple other nonprofit organizations and those who do workforce development who are really engaging in trying to find talent. An example, uh, uh, more than likely I'll be moving to South Carolina in a couple of months. My, South Carolina in the upstate region where I'll be moving to, their chamber is actually having an advertising because BMW, 3M, Adidas, Nike, and some of the other major companies in the area are trying to find talent. So the chambers are getting together to say, how do we drive a quality of life to the Greenville, Spartanburg area and also how do we drive to get talent here in this area around that quality of life? So if you pay attention, not only to what they're trying to do, they're doing a marketing campaign to say, hey, we want your talent. We want you here. This is a great place to live, grow a family, schools, all that. And we've seen it. We've seen it in major cities. We've seen it in areas across the country. But that's a bonus in some regard because based upon your industry, like healthcare, which is booming across the country, you can be able to move in and out of spaces and go work with organizations, consult with organizations and still have that impact. Another caveat is to that is pay attention to the business chamber in your area. I live in the Raleigh-Durham area working for UNC Chapel Hill and I pay attention to the Durham chamber, to the Raleigh chamber and the Chapel Hill chamber. We know, projected right now, the number of new jobs that are coming to this area based upon the number of companies that are relocating. Apple's moving here going to hire 3,000 people with an average salary of $150,000 a year. Lily is moving to this area and open up an actual manufacturing plant because biomanufacturing and pharmaceuticals is huge here. They will be hiring 500 people with an average salary in the range from $90,000 to $120,000. Another bar aisle pharmacy organization is moving here. Their starting salaries will be at $130,000 and they're looking to hire about 80 people. So if you pay attention also to your local chamber, wherever you're calling in from today, wherever you're working at, pay attention to what's coming down the pipeline and reach out to them. Because as I go into talking about networking, it's not always what you know, but who you know. And by connecting with the chamber and connecting with whoever the talent acquisition person is or business development person is in the business chamber, it can lead to opening up doors for you if you're looking to pivot your career in other space. Not only that, most business chambers have the opportunity to have funding if you're a minority women business enterprise, MWBE. So it's important for you to understand that because if you say, hey, I want to go start, this is what I want to do. There's incubators with most business chambers for minority and women-owned businesses to get startup funding, support, business plans, all that great stuff to help you navigate. If you're like, I'm done with the corporate world after 30 years and I'm gonna do something on my own, or I'm done with this job and I wanna do something on my own moving forward. Not only will you be in this virtual space a little longer, but you need to increase your profile and you need to relook at your resume. So if you think about it, if you've been on the same job for 10, 20 years, I know this because I got brothers in my grad chapter now, 
who got laid off at the beginning of the pandemic or decided to pivot and they haven't dusted off their resume in five, 10 years. Tell everybody, always be prepared. I don't care if you've been in the same field for 20 years, you never know, it might be somebody you meet at the coffee shop, somebody you meet in the grocery store or somebody you just run into and shares an opportunity with you. And the IE, that's how you end up in the job. But you always have the relationship, you gotta go back and say, oh, I haven't touched this resume in 10 years, what did I even put on there? It's important to understand that I tell most brokers that you should update your resume at least every six months to be prepared for other opportunities, specifically if you're looking to pivot. On your resume, the key is how well have you performed in your current job? When I say perform, don't tell me what you did. Tell me what you accomplished. And so you can always tell me, well, you know, I was over so many accounts. Um, you know, I, I did triage with my, uh, those accounts as a business development officer. Yeah. But how many of those from a percentage wise did you keep within the organization? How did you increase the number of accounts that you had? What was the annual spending of those accounts that you had? Those are numbers that I want to see because we now live in a strong data analytics society. And let's be real, brothers, at the bottom line, the bottom line, I don't care if you're in corporate, nonprofit, and nonprofit don't mean broke. It means you can still make a profit. It's important for you to understand is how do you shift your mindset from what I did to what I accomplished? And how do I show that in numbers and feedback? Specifically, when you corporate jobs, when you don't like us in higher education with these long CVs, have to get everything into a one or two page resume and speak to your experience overall. So it's important, one, and something we could do within the fraternity is looking at how do we bring together brothers to educate on what our interview process looks like nowadays. And then two, making sure resumes and LinkedIn are up to par and up to date because your LinkedIn should attract people to you but it also should be reflective of what your resume says in case somebody hits you up on LinkedIn and says, hey, Brother Lenny, I uh, saw your, your, you know, can we talk for a minute? That's, I got one today. Can we talk for a couple of minutes? Do you have time this week to chat about an opportunity? And so please email me back and send me your resume. If Brother Lenny's not prepared, he's over here like, well, if I send this resume for 10 years ago, it could really hurt him and his opportunities. And so we want to make sure brothers are prepared as far as that is concerned. As we move through and talk about networking as a whole, what is your unique value proposition? Brothers, as you get ready to pivot, do something different, what is it that you're bringing to the table that you can tell a hiring manager that sets you apart from others in the interview process? An example of that is the saying, hey, for two years, I oversaw uh, you know, the, the financial markets in Africa for Goldman Sachs over in Ghana, uh, Ghana and Sierra Leone. Well, in doing that, we were able to increase the market share in those areas by 10%. You can be the person that says that and say, you know what, as an organization, uh, I'll use, you know, Ernest and Young as one, pull into the market over in Africa as well. We know Goldman Sachs has been there a couple, you know, for a little time, but we want to see what market share we get. That might be the difference if you're getting a job because you're sharing what you've been able to accomplish and what your unique value is to the organization if they hire you. For most brothers, if I ask you on this call today, what your unique value is to the organization that you currently work for, uh, you're able to say it in 30 to 60 seconds. And you'll be able to hone in on that with an example that will tell an organization or a hiring manager, you're the right person we need to continue the conversation with. And it's important to understand that because most brothers say, this is what I do, but tell me more about what your uniqueness is and how you've helped the organization grow, pivot, and change itself, even in the pandemic overall. Well, about that, as we think about the processing and networking, you need to also go to networking events. I know some brothers don't like it, don't know, but the best events to go to are business chambers events. Why? I go for the simple fact, it's been a way for me to do three things. One, connect with the movers and shakers in the community who know everything that's going on. Two, have access, as I just told you about the types of jobs that are coming to the area to make sure I get involved with the talent acquisition people to help not only my own fraternity brothers, but the students I see at my institution. And then three, it gives me the ability to expand my circle of influence and my network as a whole to be in places and spaces when people call and say, hey, I met that guy from UNC. Um, he's doing career development. We want to kind of bring him aboard and tell us what we need to do to attract talent for X, Y, and Z. Cool. I am now helping an organization, which I do consulting on the side, help them increase some of their diverse initiatives, again, because again, they want to hire Matt, 
And I'm able to then walk people into opportunities because 80% of all jobs come from what we call the hidden job market relationships. So even though you're going Indeed, Monster, all these other websites that have jobs listed, nine times out of 10, as I tell people, the best way to get your job is to build relationship currency. And when you build that, you don't have to apply. That's how I ended up at UNC. I didn't apply. I got a phone call. They said, hey, we want to talk to you. And then within two months later, I'm working at UNC Chapel Hill. It is that kind of performance currency and relationship currency that you want to build, even when you're pivoting. Because what I see in working with Grab Brothers in my chapter is they've been in the field for so long, they're leaving, but they don't have what we call that currency or social capital to, oh man, you know, I've been working here 20 years, what's next? Uh, and I don't know enough people. Well, that's what we need to change, not only within ourselves, but also within Sigma as a whole, because we need to be able to say, let's pick up the phone and make sure that brother Jeremy is taken care of, that brother Antonio has an opportunity, that brother Hartsfield which walks into things. That's what Sigma Link and the ability for us to have this conversation is about, because we need to not only help our alumni brothers that are on the call, but also our recent and upcoming collegiate brothers as well. And it's important for us to understand that. So your networking is also important. So if you can go to events locally, and I know we're opening back up as far as I'm concerned, you need to be able to do attend those events, even if they're Zoom events, attend those as well. Because I know there's some cities and some places they're doing Zoom events as well. If there's the ability to go into any of these, think about what your goal would be at a networking event. Is it to meet everyone? Is it to meet specific people? Is it to find out what's going on? You need to have that and work the room. And I know I have some introverts in uh, sometimes, but you have to be intentional when you go into that space of what you want to learn and who you want to connect with overall. We also have to think about this. You get to practice doing this because by practicing doing this and attending these events, times of 10, not only you get connected, but you'll find out about the opportunities that you want to pivot into. You also realize that your soft skills are still needed for the average person to get a job because 50% of people who get a job it's not always based upon your performance, it's based upon like ability. So if people say, I like Brother Hartsfield, and through the interview process, nine out of 10, that is 50% of why you will move on in the interview process. And this has been studied. So think about that. What is your likability factors? What is your unique value proposition to an organization? And then think about LinkedIn and think about your resume overall. So it's important for you to think about that moving forward. Not only that, most of you brothers have graduated from a college. And in most universities that we have all graduated from, from an alumni base, we never use. Meaning, if you went to a PWI or HBCU or a minority serving institution in general, we don't tap into our alumni bases, yet they have alumni functions and opportunities. An example, the school I went to, where I'm at now at UNC, we have a thing called People Grow, which is a mentorship platform. Well, the goal with People Grow is to go to every college campus and set up a platform where alums can speak to the collegians. But the key to it is networking and job opportunities. You know, we read a lot about Harvard and Yale and Princeton. The reason why people go to those schools, it's not for the education. You can get a great education at Arkansas Pine Bluff just like you can at MIT or just like you can at Harvard. The key is the network is why people go to these institutions. I know that because I work at the first public institution in the nation at UNC. And it's not about the great education here. We got great faculty, great students. It truly is about the network when alumni step up and say, Tierney, send me someone. And so I wanna be able to send my fraternity brothers. I wanna send more students of color to these individuals because I'm intentionally in that of saying, hey, you have an opportunity. I have the perfect person for you. And that's how we get more people that look like us in these spaces, in these roles and in these opportunities as a whole. So again, if you're not tapping back into your alumni base or back into your institution and being involved in a unique opportunity, because I would bet everyone on this call graduated with somebody that's a millionaire. And you're probably gonna be like, really? Yes. And the reason I say that, I've worked in the university advancement at both the HBCU and the PWI space. And you'd be shocked how many people go into businesses or do things side of things. And when we bring them back to campus, you either are in school with them, might have graduated with them, and don't realize how successful they've been in their uh, their career. And that's the way for you to tap into those resources and meet with those individuals. You also got to think about the shifting right now and what types of jobs that you're in. 
as I said before, certain industries are hot, certain industries are cooling off. If you're in the hospitality management uh, industry right now, it is really cooled off. Half the people got laid off during the, uh, the pandemic. There's a reason why restaurants, hotels, different things like that can't get staff because people are like, whoa, we can't be safeguarded against another pandemic or another you know, you know, health scare or anything like that. So we have to pivot the type of jobs and roles that we want to do. When we think about it overall, another thing you need to think about as we move through and we kind of have the conversation, it's the first time ever that five generations, silent generation, baby boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Z are all in the workforce. But look what I said before, they're starting retire. Silent generation only makes up about 10% of the workforce. Those are individuals that are usually over the age of 70 right now. But baby boomers still make up almost 30% of the workforce. Gen X is about uh, 25 to 30% of workforce. The biggest gain in workforce would be millennials, those born after 1981, and those are Gen Z born after uh, 1997. Those will make up almost 60 to 65% of the workforce in the next five to 10 years. So brothers, as I, you think about your pivoting, that's why I talk about the entrepreneur opportunity because one thing organizations will always do is hire someone with a little season, a little gray in the chin because they can talk to what's going on within their industry as a whole. Also, employers are looking for certain things, right? So no matter where you're at in your, uh, your skill set, no matter where you're at in your career, they're looking for diversity, they're looking for soft skills, which many of you already have, and you'll be able to teach these millennials and Gen Zers. They're looking for analytical and quantitative skills. I can't preach enough right now. If you weren't the best person in math, that's fine. But getting a certification or getting some kind of support or uh, 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 education around data analytics is so huge. No longer are people going to get an MBA. They're going to get the other MBA, Masters of Business Analytics. And it's important to understand that because everything we do is analyzed. How, what we do on our phone, we know we can pick up our phone and it can tell us how many times we spent on it, percentage, what were our favorite websites, uh, places we spent our time on. Every business is doing that because that is how we're driving people to spit things, buy things. If you ever paid attention, if you go look at a pair of shoes and all of a sudden it keeps popping up on your phone, there's a reason behind that. These are building out what they call data analytic teams and they're paying top dollar from starting salary $70,000 into the high six figures. So it's important to think about that. Critical thing, most of you brothers have that skill set. You've been in the workforce. So you add value to critically think and show up as a unique value to say, I will look at this different angle based upon my experience. They're still looking for character and attitude. Team is important for which is shifted because a lot of brothers have come on uh, in their time period and they were part of a team. But when we talk about team nowadays, it's truly team solving problems, meaning every from a project management standpoint has a piece of the project and they're working on a weekly or biweekly project together as a team, where in the past you might have given stuff to input people, they do their own thing and then you eventually come together. That has shifted in a work culture because of the young millennials and Gen Zers who are in these spaces who value team dynamics. They also value technology. And so another thing, I know they say you can't teach your uh, old dog new tricks. Yes, you can. Brothers, we've had to adapt. Many of you have got an iPad. Over the last 30 years, more technology has been discovered than ever before. So it's important to understand how do you hone some of your technological skills that you already have and how do you increase that capacity through UX design, through Canva, through other platforms and things that you can learn about moving forward. Because then it's able to talk about your curiosity your creativity and your innovation and show possible as you're thinking about pivoting and going to the next as well. So it's important for us to think about all of that about what employers are looking more for and adapting to, but also if you're trying to become an entrepreneur and change different things for yourself as well. Uh, and then we need to look at the labor. market, And I think it's important for us to understand the labor market because the labor, labor market is shit, right? Uh, you can collect data all the time, of labor statistics, you read about it, you know, it becomes a hot thing when it comes to political times. Well, it's a hot thing right now because everybody's complaining they can't find talent. Literally, the legislators here is like, where are the people at? What are people doing? Well, people don't realize in the last two years, you've had this thing called Uber. You've had this thing called social media for the last 20 years where people can make money just by being influencers, by using, creating content, all this other great stuff. 
Now, I know some of the brothers on this call tonight, like, look, I ain't about to do all that. But think about it. It has really turned young folks, the reason why, i.e., you can't find the talent, into becoming their own business enterprise. The top social media influencer makes close to $4 million a year. My cousin is a social media influencer. It makes almost a half a million dollars a year in social media influence. So it's important to understand the our labor markets and where opportunities are to make money. Um, you can literally go to entrepreneur.com. You can go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics by the US Department of Labor. And you can also go to your local chamber or state labor department to look at where the shift is. Where I'm at, if you're in IT, you're gonna make a lot of money. If you are in anything pharmaceuticals and where I'm at, you're gonna make a lot of money. And that doesn't mean you have to be a pharmacist because we don't realize, as I said before, that most people think everything is linear. It's not. It is a matter of every organization is a business, even the church, because if we don't tithe and offer, that church is not going to be open. So it's important for us to understand the business principles for most organizations is universal. They need somebody doing marketing. They need somebody doing HR. They need somebody doing policy review. Multiple things within an organization. And we have to step up their plate and think about how we add value and how we can side, do our um, side businesses and all this other stuff if we're thinking about pivot. And then you can look at the companies that you always want to work for that might have opportunities because of the industries going on right now. So like I said before, Top industries are anything around IT, healthcare, supply chain, uh, sports and leisure actually has grown because we were home so long that you know it became really big and opportunities for people to work in the sport industry as well. So again, what you wanna pivot on, what you wanna understand is different. You also wanna match your skills. If you've worked in IT before, if you understand IT, if you have a certification, if you work here and we think about healthcare, all we think about is the nurse and doctor, there's a whole back of the house of an operation to do healthcare. I know that because that's what my wife does. You have to think about STEM. You have to think about Amazon. Amazon is hiring college graduates right now just to be uh, what they call project managers uh, for at least sixty-five to eighty thousand dollars a year is base salary depending upon location. Think about that, and you can rise. UPS. UPS is a great organization. I remember working at one school, and UPS was partnering with us. Where literally they had a management fast tracking program for brothers if they just went to school got the degree, and even if they didn't have a degree, they can have a career, because guess what? Supply chain is so huge in everything we do. So as we look at industries, there's gonna be new jobs created. There's gonna be new jobs created around tech. There's gonna be new jobs created around uh, healthcare. There's gonna be new jobs around environmental services and sciences. Be plenty of opportunity, and nonprofits will also grow as well, as we see the haves and haves not, as Jeff Bezos becomes one of the richest people in the world. So it's important for brothers to think about that in process of matching your skills and you have to sit down and do an inventory for yourself on what are your top skills. If I was to ask uh, Brother Lenny, if I was to ask Brother Hartsfield, what are your top skills? Hopefully they'll be able to tell me, here's the three or four skills I know I would bring to an organization. Hopefully Brother Miller will be able to do the same thing as far as that's concerned. But if you don't know that, you need to work on that if you're thinking about pivoting, whether entrepreneur-wise are going to a different completely field because that's what we've seen most people who have left their current opportunities have gone into uh 75 of them have gone into a complete different industry because they have transferable skills and no matter what you do it boils down to three things people budget and policy we know we're in this great fraternity of ours we got to deal with people we know we argue about budgets and paying dues again and we got policies within the fraternity that some of us want to follow and some of us don't. So no matter what industry you're in, people, policies, and budgets will be the key. And you need to be able to tie in your unique value to all three of those as you pivot and think through the process as a whole. And last but not least, as we think about it, I want you to take certifications and additional training serious. Hey. Getting a Six Sigma certification, Getting a quick data analytics like we offer here at Union after uh, 12 weeks hey, are opportunities for you to really make a change. Getting a, a TQL, total quality logistics, getting the Microsoft certifications, getting a project management certification. All these are examples of opportunities that brothers that are pivoting will add value to them, but also add value to their pocketbook. We also have to understand that if you look within most states, there's still apprenticeship opportunities. Now, I know people are like, apprenticeships? Yes. Most states still need journeymen, still need certain things overall. 
and there's a lack of it, and this is where the community colleges clean up at, is putting people through apprenticeship programs. In the state of North Carolina, there's 10,000. There's literally about 2,500 positions that go on because there's nobody going through the apprentice programs as well in these high flexible industries, even in tech. So it's important to understand that cybersecurity is one. Cybersecurity right now in the state of North Carolina is huge. It's also huge in Georgia, yet we can't get people to go either go through and get the certification fast enough. And these are jobs that are paying at the starting rate $100,000 going forward. So it's important for us to understand that of what you need to do to yourself to make sure your skill sets are matching that. And then the last thing most brothers to do is to hire or work with a career coach. Why? Because if you're looking to pivot, you need to understand certain things that are going on in your life because your life view has to match your work view. For most brothers, as you get older, like I said before, we become creatures of habit. We don't want to deal with certain things. You might not want to manage people. You might not want to deal with certain policies and procedures. You might not just want to deal with things. So you have to be able to have a coach or somebody who can walk you through is what is the type of job that you want to do? And I said this yesterday. Can you create your own job description? A prime example is if you see jobs, if you see opportunities out there, print them off, highlight them, highlight the things that you have experience in to it. Everything that you don't highlight that doesn't have, uh, that's not highlighted is not the things, it's the things you need in your portfolio. But you can take those things that you highlighted and formulate a job description. And then you're able to articulate that through interviews and different things and say, this is my unique value. This is what I bring to the organization. And then I think this will be better suited for me in your organization if I'm able to do X, Y, and Z. Because again, what you have right now in the way the, the talent, they want seasoned professionals. Why? Because Generation Z won't stay long with us around two or three years when it comes to recruitment and working in the workforce because they actually feel like, hey, I don't want to work a true nine to five. I want ability. So for the brothers that are seasoned, you have a unique opportunity. You also can go to the Center for Research on College to Workforce Transition. We will tell you a lot about what's going on in the colleges and the workforce as well as a website and going on nationally and globally. There's a couple of websites you should check out. There's the Muse, there's Coursera.org, there's General Assembly, there's Candor. All of these are opportunities for you to be able to look at certain things around your career development or your pivot. So brothers, if I can leave you with anything, because I don't want to save time for the questions, Build your online presence, build your LinkedIn, build your network, develop a career pivoting plan to career map what's next, update your resume, create your circle of influence of what you know can help you long-term moving forward. And then I want you to think about how you match your skills or add new skills to exchanging industry needs. Reach out to your old institution where you graduated from because like at UNC, we have a career coach that's free. We also offer opportunities through our People Grow platform to post jobs where talent is looking uh, across the board. I got a lot of alums who, that are being white men with a lot of money who are trying to look for talent left and right all the time. Uh, and they're always calling us up, who you, can you send to us? So it's important to understand that you need to research and identify also alternate careers that you might be interested in. Just don't think I wanna go do X, Y, and Z and I've not researched it and not use it to your advantage to understand what it would take to be in those roles. If you're going on the entrepreneurial side of the house, I would recommend you definitely get with the business chamber to be able to uh, pivot and talk about that. Even if you have an idea, make sure you use your institution of higher learning that you went to, to give it to a class. My business, when I first started, I gave it to a class in the business school and said, give me three takeaways I need to learn to be able to do, to build the Bates group up more. And they gave me three great classes working with the faculty member and the right is so successful in helping me do that. Brothers, thank you. I'll pause there and see if there's any questions. Brother Bates, uh, Brother John Hawkins, how you doing? Good, Brother Hawkins. Hey, just, just to echo on what you talked about, you know, for me, um, I have an undergraduate in, from Graham State in Draft and Design Engineering Technology, and then I have a master's in Acquisition Contract Management. Uh, a lot of that stuff is based on 23 years of military and doing acquisition from contracting program management and tests, I test weapon systems. And so when it came to the industry, like you're saying, just to echo, you know, the diversity of what I can do, what I bring to the table, the certifications, the PMPs, 
In the Army, we have our program management piece. SAFE is a agile, is a big thing that's going on right now. So getting those certifications. But what he's saying is if you have those things, I can open the doors for you to get in. And you know, us older folks, wiser folks to say on the job training, but your certifications and things of that nature got you in the door. Now your experience and you know things of that nature is going to allow you to continue. Yeah. So I just echo that, what you talked about the certifications and staying abreast of industry high changes. And one of the things for me, I go back to grandma on their engineer uh, board and, and I and I provide updates to the engineering department, how to make our programs better. This is what the industry standard has looked like. These are pivoted, changes things. And one of the things I'm uh, working with those guys uh, to do the computer engineering, uh, I would like for those guys to get a master's degree in program management, working with the business. I've gave them the blueprint of what that is because you know, I had the master's degree in that particular area, but diversify uh, these things. You now, Grandma has a cloud. One first in the state of Louisiana has a cloud certification. Uh, they have uh, cloud and they have a couple other ones. And so one of the things I'm working with the engine, engineer folks is to take advantage of that because cloud is a big thing in PM world uh, and also in industry world. So you understand that, you know, once again, you can get yourself in the door. So these are things like you say is, is, is very, very important to understand the industry standards, where it's going and how to make the adjustments to always keep yourself you know, in front of the wave and markable uh, on your skill set. So just to add on to that piece. And thank you, Brother Hawkins. And, and to Probably. your point, certain it, certain states and economies and cities are booming based upon that, right? So if you think yeah. about your point, Austin, Texas is one of the number one places in the country where everybody's moving to because Apple, Google, Tesla, <laughs> all of them have opened up what you call a secondary headquarters in Austin. In but the they Austin. need talent. They need yeah. talent. Uh, and to your point, Brother Hawkins, we have to have the conversation also is where is the talent driving to go to? So you got Austin, you've yeah. got Nashville, you've got Raleigh, Durham, where I'm at. You've yeah. got Birmingham kind of coming up now uh, yeah. in that regards. So you also have to think about where we position ourselves to be able to work with organizations on a consulting side of the house, uh, on where, where the boom is happening as far as that is concerned, whether you're alumni brother or collegiate brother. Uh, in some regard. And I tell everybody, I'm willing to sacrifice a couple of years um, to go out there and make a, good, a lot of good money when I can always come back to the great state of Ohio where I'm from at any point in time. So. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I work for the Fetner Affairs there in Austin. I live, it's about an hour drive for me, but I, I work from home uh, on a regular basis, do IT programs. You know, remember, I'm a draft and design guy, but, you know, with the diverse background, you know, I can talk that language and do the exact same thing. So that's why I say the diversity of your background plays a very, very important role. And plus leadership skills and mil being in the military for 20 oh, you're, years. You're so. hired. You, when you <laughs> said military automatically, especially where I'm at, you're hired. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been in Fort Bragg too. I've been stationed there. So Huntsville, Alabama is another yep. one. Orlando for us. So it just depends on the skill set. And that's where I tell guys all the time. And not a fact that I can get a job. It just a matter where I want to live at. Cause I have yep. the skill sets. I can go anywhere to so get a job. So true. So true so, for you. Thanks, brother. And like I said, we'll get you next time. We, we you know, get you, get you down in in, in the big uh, Gulf Coast region. So I problem, still got I look, you. I look forward to coming down there. So okay, okay, brothers. Again, we want to thank Brother Bates. Um, are there any other questions that we might have? And I and I just want to um, echo some of the things that um, Tierney talked about. Um, you know. Um, being an educator for the past 28 years, making career shift uh, was a little nerve wracking, um, but um, been doing it now for almost a year. And it was probably one of my best decisions I ever made. And as he said, when you're looking at areas, um, you always look at uh, ways of diversifying. And, and, you know, when you're going from education and then all of a sudden I'm in healthcare, um, but you, you just kind of just look at that diversity. And one of the things I put out on LinkedIn and, um, and also on um, Instagram, because those are two the, probably two on the social media that I'm on. Um, it's, it's one of the things that brothers have to understand also 
even though I've ever, I've gotten the certificates and things like that, uh, I made a decision to go back to school. Crazy as it may seem, uh, you would say, oh, I've got this, I got that. But I made a decision because I wanted to get uh, more deeper in healthcare compliance. And so I wanted to understand more and I can get that through a certificate, unfortunately. So, um, you know, I'm going through an 18 month, I'm gonna be going through an 18 month program starting in July and it's a master's in legal studies with the emphasis in healthcare compliance. So those are things that you have to commit yourselves when you make those changes. Um, but again, being in education for almost 29 years, you just say, hey, Tierney's been there. Um, you just want to make some more money. Let's just be real. <laughs> and, uh, and um, you know, you love it. And even what I'm doing now, I still have a part of education that is part of the business. Uh, it's more of a career school. Um, but again, um, those are the things that you need to look at when you're looking at career changes um, and how that you can use your experience that you've had over the years and how can you transform that into other areas. So, you know, I, I had a lot of advice and had a lot of conversation and uh, before I made the move, but it's been a great move. So I always say, do your homework, uh, research it out all the way through. Um, healthcare is hot right now. Um, it's going to be hot because of baby boomers. Yep. And baby boomers are going to take our business to a whole nother level and what we're doing each and every day. So um, that is, that is, it's going to take me on out, put it like that. So um, just do your research and, 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 and figure out what you want to do. You know, uh, Brother Hawkins just made a great point that military experience that he has and everything he's done. A lot of times brothers don't understand that that rolls over into so many different areas and you just have to take your pick of what area you want to go into uh, because you've worked in vast number of jobs. Um, I realized that, you know, student affairs played a role, but at my last institution, the president did two things for me and, that, and I'm a, then I'm gonna shut up. She did two things for me. One, um, she made sure that I got um, my certificate in fundraising management through IUPUI. Um, an expensive program, but the school paid for it. Um, that's why we have the foundation. Um, the other thing that she allowed was that she expanded um, my, my, my role. And so not only did I have student affairs, I had enrollment management, but more importantly, I had campus operations. So I had an oversight of facilities, transportation, vending, I dealt with contracts. So, you know, she allowed me to do that. I did that for the past three years. So that kind of helped me in, in where I am now. So, you know, when you have those people that are supporting you and that can take you to that, that next level, definitely that's that networking. Um, and so definitely take advantage of those opportunities. Brother Tanya, questions, any other questions? Yes, Brother sir. Tanya, when you get done with that, uh, that master's degree, Go ahead and apply over here in the RTP area. They look ease of operations and healthcare, and they playing that money. <laughs> I, I know because I believe my, my wife does part of her job is compliance, so I already know, and she get paid. So, so. <laughs> right, right, and and I'm and I'm doing it. I'm doing it through. You know, you have to do it through. You know, I didn't know that when I was researching. Um, so I'm at American. I'll be at American University, Washington School of Law. So it's a legal. It's a whole, it's a legal deal through, through the, it's a master's program, but you're actually getting the master's program in the law school. So um, definitely, definitely um, research those things and, and figure out what is the best for you. Um, and then, then let me just say this, I have to say this, uh, where you go to, where you move to, uh, people say, why do you want to come back to Mississippi? Man, I connections, uh, insight connections. Um, with legislators, with the Department of Health, top tier folk, connections. Um, so people ask you that question, 
Um, you know, I might not do well at I might do well at, at, a, at a different city I've never lived in. Um, but, you know, when you spent, I spent almost 18 years in the state of Mississippi and being at Jackson State gave me opportunities to meet so many people. Guess what? I'm taking advantage of all the folk that I have relationships with and I built upon that. So building those relationships over time, hey, it helps out. So any other, any questions that we might have from any of the brothers? Again, I wanna thank all of you all um, for being on board. Let me again um, invite you all to um, make sure um, that you attend next Tuesday. Um, the combination of collegiate brothers and alumni brothers on that call. Again, knowing your worth, um, the art of negotiating. Um, Brother Bates, um, there are several groups that he and I are a part of, and people are constantly asking him, you know, how do I, how did I determine how much I'm worth? For us that were in higher education, you know, it's always a range. And that range is, you can be on the low end because, you know, as a, as a, when I was vice president, as a budget manager, I wasn't trying to spend all the money. But if, if you knew your worth and you could sell me to get in that high dollar and I knew you had it, I was going to get a high dollar. So, but if you didn't sell me and you have the experience, guess what? I'm going to give you that low dollar because I'm going to save my budget. So again, he's going to talk about that on next Tuesday. Um, again, I want to thank him for everything that he's doing. Um, I want to thank um, Brother Edward Hood, who's on, who's on the call, who leads our program efforts from the headquarters. Um, Brother Jeremy Speaks, who serves as our chief of staff. I want to thank Brother John Hawkins, uh, who has done an excellent job um, serving as the Gulf Coast Regional Director of Education. Brother brings a world a wealth of information um, to our education team. Um, we're about to talk about some things um, and we're probably going to end up, you know, I, I always say don't break, don't break anything that's successful. Um, as we kick off the STEM initiative uh, and STEM STEAM initiative, one of the things Brother Hawkins is bringing to the education team um, is something from the Gulf Coast involving STEM. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, I think Brother Dwight Calloway, who's the newly elected Southern Region Director of Education, was on the call. But again, we want to thank all of you all for attending. Um, the recording will be in Blueprint. Uh, we will send out after next week um, some information that will go out. And so you'll know that the recording is in Blueprint. But before we close tonight, uh, Brother Tierney Bates has a has a surprise for you brothers that stayed around. So I'm gonna let Brother Bates um, tell you all that surprise and uh, we'll go from there. Brother Bates. Sure, sure. So I do own the base group, which is a career consulting firm. Uh, and what I'm gonna offer brothers tonight is a free 30 to 45 minute uh, consult uh, on your, if you need to pivot, supporting you around salary negotiations, whatever you need. So the first five brothers to contact me, I'll put my information over in the chat. Um, they'll get, uh, I did the same thing for the collegiates. They'll get opportunity to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, to be able to help you navigate what's next overall. I'll give you an example. I usually charge 150 to $200 an hour to do this. And I'm giving away for free for our brothers that reach out to me tonight. All right. So brothers, please take advantage of tbase1914 at gmail.com. Uh, we want you all to take advantage of this opportunity and like I said, you're never too old to learn. You're never too old to learn. I keep saying that over and over again. But again, brother, we, we've reached our, we've reached a little bit over our hour. We're right at an hour. And again, I wanna thank you all for attending this evening. I look forward to you all being part of the, the third and final series of our career preparedness next Tuesday, seven o'clock central, eight eager worth the art of negotiating your salary. Thank you all brothers and have a good evening and God bless. So, so how can kick me off, huh, huh, huh Dr. Cheney? He said, what now? <laughs> kick me off the task force education team, him and speaks, huh?
Oh wow! Yeah, they, 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 they